Hi, this is Raymond Chan, and I'm going to be using finite difference to simulate quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling happens when an electron encounters a barrier that is very, very thin. So the electron has a probability of going through the barrier. Uh, this happens because an electron is a wave and a particle at the same time. In classical physics, an electron represents a ball. When a ball, if it does not have enough force, it will not be able to punch through the barrier. And there won't be a probability that the ball will make it through the barrier. This will always happen with the same amount of energy. So in quantum tunneling, there's a probability, which makes this different. This is the Schrodinger equation. Uh, it describes an electron as a wave and a particle. It has real and imaginary parts. So to make this simple in MATLAB, we're just going to keep track of a real part and an imaginary part. So it's going to look like this. So here's the real part, and here's the imaginary part. And now we're going to use finite difference to approximate both equations. So this is how that, that looks like, and we want to solve for sigma n of real and sigma n of imaginary. So that will look like this. And so these two equations will be plugged into MATLAB, and r will be our Courant's number. Uh, the Courant's number decides how accurate it is. The smaller the number, the more accurate the approximation will be. But there are more computations. So we're going to start with a Courant's number of 1 over 3. OK, so now we're going to watch a Gaussian plane wave interact with this barrier. The Gaussian plane wave is the electron. And in this simulation, I'm using my delta x as uh, one angstrom and my mass as the mass of an electron and uh, my Courant's number is 1 over 3 so here it goes I can t some things I can tell you about the energy of the wave is that its wavelength is inversely proportional to its energy so the smaller the wavelength it has the higher the energy So when this plane wave hits a potential barrier, there's going to be some reflection and some transmission. And so, as you can see here, uh, at the last frame, there is uh, a transmission coefficient. This taking takes in count of both real and imaginary parts. So only a little under 50% of the wave pass through the barrier. Um, so now we're going to take the barrier to half its size and see what happens. So now we're going to watch the same wave interact with the barrier half its size. So I'm going to speed it up here to where it hits the barrier, and then we're going to watch. So what you're going to see is a lot more transmission, probably, and a lot less reflection. Um, it's going to look like it's twice as much, but since this only plots the real, you're not going to see the imaginary reflection. And so, just like that, I also have the transmission coefficient. And you can see a lot of more of it has transmitted through. Um, now we're going to look at a close-up. Alright, so this is a close-up of the, uh, the first interaction between the wave and the barrier. So, now we're going to see look at closely what happens to the wave. 
So as you can see, you can see the reflections going on over here. You can also see that the wave is really unstable inside the barrier. But once it exits the barrier, the wave is stable and the amplitudes are less than the amplitudes from what it started with. So now we're going to look at a, um, a regular potential barrier, which is probably in the shape of a right triangle. Um, what happens is that okay now we're going to watch a plane wave interact with a lake ir irregular potential barrier which is in the form of a right triangle you're going to see a lot more transmission and a lot less reflection than the uh, square potential barrier and on the last frame I have the transmission coefficient which you will see is a lot higher than the square potential barrier coefficient. So here it is, it's 0.51 and so that's about 3% higher than the square potential barrier. This is a close-up of the plane wave interacting with the barrier. So part of the barrier is high enough for it to tunnel through completely and parts of it are not. So as you can see, uh, the plane wave was stable like a lot before it goes and there's a lot less bouncing inside. Alright, so this is a, another person's program. It's made by University of Colorado at Boulder. And it's a very good program, it's made in Java, and you can do many things with it, like lower and higher potential barrier like this. Um, you can increase the width of the wave and its position. Uh, so, let's compare it to my simulation. So here, the uh, things you see in this simulation are very, very similar to what you see in my simulation. So, uh, consider my simulation pretty good. Um, so that's it for the video. If I hope you liked it, and if you think of ways that I can improve it, please tell me, and I'll probably do it. Bye.